Live from the Javits Center in New York City, it's theCUBE. Covering Inforum 2017. Brought to you by Infor. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Inforum 2017. I am your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Dave Vellante. We are joined by Chip Coyle. He is Infor's CMO. Thanks so much for sitting down with theCUBE today. Thank you for having me. So we just kicked off the show, uh, the, the general session, Charles Phillips, a lot of other Infor executives up there on the main stage talking. Uh, lay it out for us. What, how many people are here? What are, what are sort of the big themes that, that you're trying to get across here? Yep, well, it, first of all, it's great for Infor to be having our conference here at the Javits Center. It's about 10 blocks from our, you know, our home in, uh, in New York City. And um, so this year we've got uh, nearly 7,000 attendees over the course of the week. Uh, many component programs uh, as uh, we do every year uh, with our partner summit, uh, with our um, various uh, conferences for the different uh, in individual, you know, customer constituencies, uh, an executive forum, and, um, and of course a, a big customer appreciation event uh, happening tomorrow night. You've also made some big announcements. I'm talking mostly about Coleman AI and Burst. I want you, if you can unpack those for our viewers a little bit. Yeah, I, I would say the theme of the conference this year is the age of networked intelligence. And what does that mean? Well, we've had, you know, for the last several years, uh, a layered strategy uh, in our business, starting at the foundation with very deep industry functional applications, purpose built for the different industries. We've taken all of that technology and moved it to the cloud so that you get the benefits of the efficiencies and uh, the network capability of taking uh, your applications to the cloud. We uh, recently, a year ago, acquired GT Nexus, uh, which expands our capability in a broader sense to a commerce uh, network, uh, and we're able to incorporate that into our traditional uh, applications in different industries. And then, just a, a, a couple of months ago, we acquired a business intelligence software company, Burst, which brings some really uh, great technology for uh, business intelligence that we can layer on top of all of our applications in this network environment. And then finally, today, the big announcement was Coleman, as you said, and that was to uh, take our uh, new artificial intelligence platform and really uh, create just profound new ways that our workers in the different industries and their different companies uh, across the networked enterprise can interact uh, in, in a business setting, much like people do in a, in a commercial setting today. Can, can you, Chip, talk about the evolution of the brand promise? So when we first met Infor at AWS reInvent, it was like, who was Infor? You know, trying to educate people on who Infor is. And then, so I felt like last year was your sort of stamp of, this is how Infor and why Infor is relevant. And now, this seems to be sort of an undertone of innovation. So can you talk about the evolution of the, the brand and what you see as the brand promise? Well, we are, very consistent in our branding and positioning of Infor is really the first industry cloud company. We're the ones who have uh, been at an accelerated pace bringing the most deep industry rich functional applications to the cloud. And that has created a great layer now for all of these future innovations that we have talked about today uh, with uh, the benefits of uh, business intelligence enabled applications built right in so that you can truly have uh, all the information you need at the right time for the right purpose to, to make immediate business decisions. And then the potential and capability of artificial intelligence on top of that. As you know, in, as the chief marketing officer, can you talk a little bit about how these innovations change how you do your job and how they make your life easier in terms of making the right decision at the right time, making the decision better, uh, having the right data? Yeah, well some of the other announcements that we're making this week uh, actually are in um, my particular line of business, which is marketing. And uh, one of those, for example, is we're broadening our 
in for a CRM suite with a uh, link to LinkedIn's Sales Navigator. So that brings a whole uh, set of important data to uh, about customers to enable better customer interactions uh, for, for our customers. So that's something that uh, we look to be using in our business uh, along with Marketo, which is a new business partner, mm -hmm. uh, as the um, engine or the marketing automation platform to, uh, to fuel our marketing business. So that's how it's uh, impacting me directly in, in what I do. So I wonder if you could help us sort of debunk some of the myths. So Oracle would say enterprise apps aren't moving to the cloud and we are the company to move them to the cloud and we're the only company who can move them to the cloud. Um, you know, SAP, it's got its sort of some cloud going on, but most of the stuff remains on-prem. We heard today 55% of your revenue comes from cloud. We know you made a decision years ago to run on AWS. Help us understand, I mean, these are core, hardcore enterprise apps that are running in the cloud. So help us debunk some of those myths and add some color to that. The traditional processes of uh, rolling out major applications and enterprise applications in an enterprise is completely changing. And it's also changing because of the capabilities of the cloud and the approach that Infor takes, uh, which is very uh, uh, easy to uh, assemble and configure with our uh, ION technology and cl uh, co collaboration technologies such as Mingle to put these uh, applications in place in a much faster way for our customers than uh, some of the traditional players in the ERP market uh, have been accustomed to do. And they just don't have the current technology uh, approach or foundation to be able to move quickly to the cloud as, uh, as we do at Infor. And talking about Infor, you talked a little bit about the brand evolution. Um, how are you getting the word out? Infor is, is really a sleeping giant in the technology industry. H how, are you, how are you getting your name out there? Well, one thing that we want to do uh, with our brand is show, uh, well first of all, introduce Infor to the, the world at large that hasn't heard of us. And the way that we want to do that is by uh, showing what kind of benefits we can give to customers in different industries. So uh, we just recently launched uh, our first ever TV commercials. Uh, they have run on shows like Meet the Press and some of the CNBC and MSNBC shows. That has, incidentally, all of that was developed entirely 100% in-house with Hook and Loop, our creative in-house creative agency. So we're very proud of that. We're looking to do more of that with TV. We also have a relationship with the Brooklyn Nets here in New York where on the business side, we're enabling them with performance and team analytics uh, with a, a whole slew of uh, applications of that with you know, biometric readings and, um, and imagery you know, when they're uh, moving around on the court that can then be used to uh, help fine tune and uh, make decisions on which personnel to use, which, you know, what are the, 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 the best uh, players to be able to say shoot a free throw after one day of rest versus two days of rest, that level of analytics. So uh, we are in that partnership with the Nets uh, are also uh, in a branding way going to be on the Nets jersey starting this September with an N4 patch on the jersey and we're announcing that uh, also this week. Awesome, this is definitely a New York theme here. We're here <laughs> at the Javits Center, you know, you know Brooklyn Nets, uh, Hudson Yards, another huge project that you guys are intimately involved in. Not a lot of, you know, vendors are explicitly mentioned in that. Maybe talk about that a little bit. Well, Hudson Yards as a development is unique in that it is really a completely self-contained uh, mm -hmm. city in, in all respects where the concept is to be able to network the data and information of anybody within that city with respect to uh, where they live in the high rises, with where they shop in the retail stores or grocery stores, 
where they eat in the restaurants and uh, where they work with uh, you know, all of the, uh, the, the businesses that are locating there too. So that gives you so much potential to rethink uh, how information can enable just the way that you move about even in the city. You know, from uh, uh, keyless entry into facilities to um, voice activated uh, uh, tasks like, uh, can you please restock my uh, groceries in my refrigerator in my condo? So there's so many, uh, so many ways that that can be a broad showcase for the true smart city of the future. He's a high-end clientele. <laughs> this is very New York. Uh, Absolutely. I, I, I wanted to shift gears and talk about the ecosystem a little bit. There's a few names that I, maybe they were here before, but I hadn't seen them, at least prominently. Um, certainly IBM, you mentioned Marketo, uh, great, interesting partner, you know, hot company. And some of the SIs are sort of coming out of the woodworks. Now, yes. when you think about your strategy for sort of micro verticals, you know, the, the SIs, I always say, they love to eat at the trough, and if there's not a lot of customizations, they're not interested. However, you've, you've attracted them because you've now got a substantial enough you know, estate. So talk about that evolution of the ecosystem. We're proud to have as our diamond sponsors this year, AVAP, as well as Marketo. And AVAP has been a long-standing uh, partner for, implementation partner for us. Uh, in a, an expanding area. Their heritage is with Lawson in healthcare and they're doing a lot uh, of implementations across our business in all geographies, in all industries. But what's new this year is um, we also have attracted some new, some of the big SIs such as Deloitte and Accenture, Capgemini, Grant Thornton. And yep. so they have all come in uh, as sponsors and uh, we're uh, really on the cusp of some, some big and, and bigger and better things with them in, in the different businesses. The other thing I wanted to ask you about is, you, Infor has a unique way of attracting interesting speakers. I've done probably five or 6,000 interviews in the last five or six years, and some of the most interesting have been at Inforum. Deborah Norville came on in New Orleans. Last year, Lara Logan, uh, Naomi Tutu, Annika Holicum, amazing three women interviews. This and year, Susan Rice. This year, Susan Rice yes. is here. So, what's that all about? Um, they're not techies. Uh, they're just interesting people. What are you trying to do there? Well, we have a program, the Women's Infor Network, WIN, uh, that was created uh, by Pam Murphy, our Chief Operating Officer. And starting a few Informs ago, we wanted to use Inforum as a platform to uh, showcase uh, innovative women in the world. And it's, it's a little bit of a departure from our product and technology messages. Uh, and this year, we've got, as you mentioned, some great um, in inspiring women uh, like Jill Biden, the former uh, first you know, vice second president. Lady. Second lady. <laughs> and, and also uh, Susan Rice, as you mentioned. So uh, it, it's, it's going to be, a, it's always a very popular session. Yes, and we're looking forward to having those women on, on theCUBE uh, too tomorrow. Absolutely. Chip Coyle, thanks so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. We'll have more from Inform 2017 after this.